Hello, people of YouTube. Welcome to my living room and to episode number 26 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma, and you can find me on the internet. It's mostly on Instagram and Ravelry as Selma's Nits. Welcome if you're a new viewer. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer. It's really nice of you to join me today for this new episode. I did, um, I did intend to film it earlier, but the heat wave here was terrible and I really didn't feel like doing anything. So, so I didn't, but it's a good thing because it allows me to show you more today. But it also means that since today is the first cooler day, it's also very gray and very gloomy and the light sucks and it keeps changing. So I guess you can never have it all and um, we will try to make the best of it. So let's grab your drink, grab your whip or anything else you want to do while you're watching me and let's go. We can start with my first finished object, which is the Solano Top by Stella Egidi. It comes from the magazine Breeze by Making Stories. And I say top and not a sweater because I did the sleeveless version. So that's the front and this is the back. The back was really the um, most interesting point of the pattern for me. So that's why I chose this model actually. You can do it with or without the sleeves and I went for it without because I used linen to make it to have something very light to wear for summer. Um, it's pretty ironic that now it's over the heat waves is the heat wave is basically over as well <laughs> anyway always happens um, I used a yarn called Antigone by Dererum Natura the shade is called Voie Lactée that's a milky way it's a dark gray with bluish undertones but it looks much bluer than it actually is I think um, it took me four weeks to finish it, which is okay, given the temperature, which was not exactly knitting inducing. And, um, and yeah, I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with it. Things I liked about it was the construction. It's the first time I did something like that. So you cast on everything and then you put stuff on um, hold and uh, you go one side then the next then the back or whatever basically you create piece by piece and then you piece them all together um, and also the the pleating here at the back is really nice it's made last basically before you um, go all around with the eye cord so it's yeah it's only when you're done that you actually know what it will look like for real in the end. Today I'm drinking kefir. I think like last time. I really like it. It's very fresh. The yarn was really pleasant to work with. It's not very slippery, which means that um, it doesn't exactly flow from the needle, which actually is also a downside. I was not as fast with this as I would be with regular merino let's say but it's also really good because it holds the stitches very well because it's a little stiff you know um, so if you need to frog rip off everything you will still have your um, your stitches to go through pretty easily which was good I think the drape of it is really good as well I, it's washed and blocked and I think it will keep softening because it's still a bit, I wouldn't say stiff really, but it's not as flowy and drapey as silk or, well, definitely not as silk, of course, because that is very flowy. But yeah, it's more on the heavier side, probably also because my, my gauge is it's not really super tight, but it's tight enough that it's not transparent. It looks transparent when, this way, but when you wear it, it is not. But I think that will keep softening without 
um, getting weighed down by everything without stretching too much, if you see what I mean. The one thing I didn't really like about it, well, now that it's finished, I can say that I, it's not my favorite thing, is the neckline is very high in the front, which is always a bit tricky for me because I'm not used to wearing that kind of stuff. It's not unpleasant. And the uh, yarn is actually very um, soft and light on the skin, so it's really not scratchy <clears throat> or anything. It's just that I'm not used to that. But I could as well wear it front side back and the other way around so maybe i will do that i was a bit lazy at some point because you have really really long um rows and i didn't count and i ended up having to rip off like 15 rows which sucks when you have rows which are over 200 stitches already the so people do count your stitches particularly if like me you are a perfectionist and you know that if you are missing one lacking one or if you have one too many you will not just fix it you will have to rip it off uh, one thing i changed about the pattern is i made it shorter the body you have a lot of increases <clears throat> every 10 rows and you end up with very long rows which make for a very wide garment it's definitely not form-fitting, you know, it's it's loose, let's say. I wouldn't say boxy, but it is loose. Um, and if I followed the pattern completely and went to the end of the increases, plus the additional length that you're supposed to knit, it would have made for something like a nightgown, basically. I don't know if I'm shorter than most. I think I'm average, but it would have been really, really long and very wide so of course of course the width also works because you need to accommodate the hips you know but still i just basically when i recognized that it would be very very long i just tried it on and said okay i need like three more centimeters and i knit accordingly and then i did the eye cord around but you need to take this into consideration it could be very long on you i think you're supposed to knit like 47 centimeters below the armhole it is long on me at least but i'm still very happy about it i really like it and i think it will get a lot of wear my second finished object in knitting i can actually not <laughs> show you it's a secret test knit secret test knit uh but i can show you my swatch and i can show you the pom-pom which is made because it's uh it's a hat because I, I obviously don't attach pom-poms on other garments um or accessories or anything and yeah it's not attached yet because the hat is still drying this is my swatch it's um 21 stitches on 29 rows with four and a half millimeter needle oh yeah i forgot to say the size of the needles in the french podcast um the original one was supposed to be three and a half but it's um yeah, it just wasn't working. This is Welsh Mule DK yarn from Mallview yarn. She dyes with <clears throat> natural dyes. This one is what's it? Oh, oh, gauze and iron. And I really like the subtle stains, let's say. It's so Welsh Mule is a crossbreed of blue faced Leicester Ram and a local Welsh Hill breed. So it's not it's not as soft as regular BFL would be but it's definitely not scratchy or it's not even rustic for that matter. <laughs> it's like halfway, but it's very warm. It's still something which I would wear on my skin without any problem. Admittedly, I'm not very sensitive, but still. I think I would see it as a cow as well. It's, yeah, so as, as I was saying, it is warm. So it would be fine for winter, <laughs> but then you don't really wear hats in summer either. I'm so sorry, I cannot tell you more. I think it might be out like in the fall at some point, somewhere. Sorry, I cannot tell you more. But it's, it's actually really frustrating for me as well that I was able to actually finish it and I cannot show it to you. Um, it was lots of fun to knit. It's going to be very pretty and I'm really happy I was lucky enough to be a tester for it. Another finished object is a sewing project actually. It's this Ogden Cami by True Bias. 
I saw it a lot on Instagram among the, the English speaking um, accounts which I follow. It's a very simple, easy uh, camisole top with a v-neck in the front and in the back, which is actually deeper in the back. And yeah, I just really liked it. The only adjustment I made, okay, it is a bit wide and I had to shorten the, the, the straps. I had to remove three centimeters of them because it was fine as well with the original length that they were. I think it might be due to the fabric which strength, which, which stretches quite a bit. Um, it was fine, but it was not, not decent, but I was not really comfortable going out with it. I would never have worn it to go to work, for example. So, so I decided to shorten the, the straps and I'm glad I did. I shortened them in the back actually. It's much better this way. I've been able to wear it yesterday already and I love it. And I definitely see myself making more of these in the future. The whole uh, upper part is lined and uh, so it means that you can actually, you could wear it without a bra and it's not transparent um, or undecent or anything. Yeah, I'm really happy about it. The only annoying part is that it's PF pattern and I just hate having to cut all the the pages and assembling them together. It just really annoys me. But I want something fast and simple and this looked like the best choice. So I went for it anyway and I'm glad I did. It's definitely going to be a staple in my wardrobe. I will make more. That's all for the finished objects. I have, um, oh no, that's not all actually. I have embroidery as well today. This is a kit which I bought from Arrow Workshop Mercerie. Um, it's a French website. I don't know if they have a physical shop. I think they are based in Toulouse. And so basically you get the fabric, the thread and a needle and um, I don't know how it's called. It's a kind of paper in French. It's called Solufix. Maybe it's called the same in English. Basically, it's a paper. In this kit, the, the pattern is printed on it and you just stick it to the fabric. And um, once you're done, you put it in water and you leave it for like five minutes and it just dissolves. It's perfect. So you don't have any um, any risk of having the marks appearing or yeah it's just ends up being very clean and easy to follow i'm by far not an expert um embroider but this was fun and easy so <clears throat> i really enjoyed making it the only thing now is what do i make with what do i do with it what the original plan i think is to keep the the hoop and um, to like attach it to a wall or something, but it's not exactly our style. So I don't know, I'm open to suggestions if you have any. Uh, that, that now was the last finished object. I have two ongoing works. Um, the first one is the Zaza sweater by Maria Milly Designs. It's going to be a very pretty sweater. I'm knitting it with by Simon Yarns the colorway is called Madame Rêve. It's a really, really nice deep burgundy. And you can see it actually much better on the swatch that it has a lot of darker and slightly lighter nuances and it's very pretty and I think I'm going to love it. Um, I'm making it as a mini, well, actually more of a micro cow with a fr my friend Jaime, who also has a podcast, but only in French. And uh, yeah, we cast on together last week. I know that she's taking hers on holidays and I will take mine as well. So we will both make progress in the summer, or at least in August. I had, it's the first time that I use so many markers because I don't want to miss any repetition. Of, and it's just much easier to follow this way. So yeah, I will, I will show you more of it next time when it's actually um, further along. The second work in progress is this dress, an Antigon dress by Urban Fairy. I'm making it sleeveless, but I'm adding a belt. 
and I'm going to use this same fabric. I actually still have a lot of it uh, left over from the skirt which I made for the wedding I went to in June. So I'm trying to um, make the best of it. I don't know, all the, all the pieces are cut, but I'm not sure if I will have the time to finish everything before going on holiday tomorrow. So maybe it will have to wait for me to be back to actually get finished. That's it for the project. I have one stash enhancements to show you because I'm really proud of it. It's, uh, I got in the mail eight balls of super soft yarn from Magazine Duet. I'm so sorry, it's Swedish. I may be butchering the name. I chose the um, dark gray colorway. It's 100% wool and 50 grams, 280 meters, which means that eight balls of it are actually over 2,200 meters of yarn. It's light fingering and I already have a couple of projects which I have kind of associated with it. And I'm looking forward to casting on it. It's very nice and soft. And if it's like it's other cousins from the north, which I've tried already, it will definitely soften um, after washing. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I have uh, decided to add a segment to my um, to the podcast, which would be a question and answers. And um, so a couple of weeks back, I asked on Instagram if people had any questions for me related to knitting. And I will do like the five, the, the last five minutes of the podcast, I will start answering these questions. I'm not answering them in a chronological order, well, in a in any logical order rather, I will, I'm using them as they came. I'm answering them as they came. So yeah, I'm not going to give the names of the people who asked them because some questions might have been asked by several people. And um, yeah, so if you hear yours, yeah, it is yours. So the first question was with which uh, yarns have you started knitting? So. I really, really don't remember what I first used like for learning to knit. I um, It was probably acrylic and it was bright red and I did not go any further than a Barbie sized scarf. So um, yeah, it's nothing really um, unforgettable. But when I went back to knitting back in like end of 2009, 2010, I used Fildar a yarn which was a mix of wool and and acrylic or nylon or any um, synthetic thing it was fine for what i wanted i needed a lot of it i had to buy like eight or nine balls i made a gigantic scarf with um, fringes and it was knitted with size eight millimeter needles so anyway i didn't want anything too expensive and also I didn't know much better so um, that was the best choice for me back then and although I don't knit with acrylic anymore I can understand definitely that sometimes you just don't have the means for anything more luxurious or um, sometimes you might not want to invest for whatever reason if you're just beginning you know something you have to Two ideas. Either you want to start with really fancy yarn so that you don't actually want to uh, uh, give it up. And it is more pleasant to knit with than acrylic. But then at the same time, do you actually want to invest a lot of money if you're not sure you're going to stick to it, you know? So yeah, my the first yarns I started with were cheap fila yarns. And then I graduated to nicer stuff. The So the second question is, which are your favorite needles? Well, last year I was very, very lucky in that my friend Sophie offered me a kit of Haya Haya Sharp needles. So the kit goes from size 2.75 to size 5. Okay, I filled the... the, the Thing with more which are not all high high sharp needles but yeah it's uh, they are lovely they're my favorite needles so far um, that's the ones I used uh, the most 
I have a couple of sizes which I have double because I already had them and same goes for cables but I really love them they're just um, perfect for me and I yeah I use them the most so that's my favorite needles I have started using um, Chiaogu needles recently but I only have very small sizes of them and only in fixed and not interchangeable needles because I use them for stuff like lace or socks if I ever finish one pair I might actually take that one one sock uh, on my holiday just to um, just to actually get further along with it I should actually finish it at some point but yeah there you have them my my hi hi sharps these are my favorite needles the third question was how did you learn to knit so the answer is i learned to knit with my mother originally and with the help of a book which she gave me which is very very vintage today I actually she gave me two books but i didn't stick with crochet that's the first one uh so and i i actually i actually suspect that it was my grandmother's before being my mother's because of the writing here but yeah it's um it's yeah and also it's from 1971 so <laughs> it's it's good enough and so for knitting it was um this one it's fildar again so it's it's probably the brand that most french knitters actually know like across all ages and and um social backgrounds and everything it's probably the most famous french brand in france so this book has all the basics, so like casting on with the most most basic um, technique and then knit and purl. It's not so bad actually. I, I would admit that I didn't go much further than the first, uh, let's say 10 pages with um, like basic stitches and increases and decreases, but yeah it's it's really not so bad um it has all you need to start and then when i went back to it um years later i used this book again to get the basics back and then i actually stuck to the basics for quite some time like um i i didn't go much further than knitting and purling and really cast on and cast off in the most basic ways for a long time and then i learned progressively with the internet because it was just way more easily accessible um, than having to find a book um, yeah it's just um and also I learn much better when I can see the thing being done. So video is, is how it goes for me. But yeah, it was a book and my mom originally. So these are the three questions. I'm, I, will, I will stick to these for today. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. We've seen what I've been up to recently. I won't be back until the beginning of September, I'm afraid, because I will be gone quite a lot, but unless Unless I actually manage to fit a recording session like short before going back to work. Well, actually, I will be back at work for one day before getting my ankle operation. So, yeah, I don't know. But worst case, beginning of September. So worst case, one month of uh, podcast vacation for me. <laughs> I'm still everywhere. Uh, everywhere. I'm still on Instagram all the time. So it should it should be fine. I wish you a very, very nice month of August. I hope it's sunny and not too warm and that you have lots of knitting, sewing, crafting and that you enjoy your time. So take very good care and I will see you soon. Bye.